This is actually my fetish. Mixing programming languages in which make no sense. Mixing C++ and Rust for fun and profit. I've also heard that there's D in the article. Yeah, you heard us. You heard you heard me right, boys. This article about to give us the D. Lang. For quite some time, I've been bothered by this thought. Individual programming languages, C++, Rust, Go, etc., are traditionally viewed as walled gardens if your main function is written in C++. You better find yourself C++ libraries like Qt to build the rest of your code base with. Do you want to use Flutter to build your app's user interface? Get ready to build Logic in Flutter, too. Do you really want to use Rust library to make your application safer? You get uh, to either rewrite the whole app in Rust or build an ugly extern C wrapper around it that won't fit well into your pro uh, into your object oriented C++ code. Okay, this is good. This is a good start. This is a good start. This is a good this is a good start. This has been this has been the standard view on using multiple programming uh, languages for many years. However, I've decided that this view is fundamentally flawed because every compiled language used the same set of concepts when it's compiled. Okay. Okay, or just use zig. Really? You're telling me you're telling me zig is better? You're telling me Zig is that much better? Is Zig actually that better? Is Zig is that better that you would rather drop everything else and just use Zig? Everything else. Just use COBOL. Zig is pre-alpha. Maybe VLang? VLang. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. All right, anyways. Okay, code is split up into functions that can be reused. Functions are identified by a string generated from a function name in the source. For example, G++ generates Z3 foo V as identifier for uh, void foo. This string is always reproducible. For example, both Clang and GCC on Linux follow the Atenium C++ ABI convention for mangling function names. Functions are called by storing all parameters to that function at a specific location in memory and then using... Oh, my goodness. I'm still effed. Am I really just... We're, am I really just hitting that many Fs today? What is happening? I'm gonna have to call. I'm gonna have to call. I'm gonna have to call my my internet service provider. Let them know that I want to be back. I don't want to be down. I want to be back. I want to be back. Functions are called by storing all the parameters to a, f a function at a specific location in memory and then using a call instruction or equivalent to move control to the function. For example, to call void uh, foo from earlier, the compiler converts C++ statement foo into an assembly call Z3 foo v. Uh, the assembler then replaces call with the appropriate opcode and replaces Z3 foo v with the location of the first instruction by identi uh, identified by Z3 foo v. V. Functions return by storing their return value if they have one in a specific location, then ret instruction or equivalent. Okay, this all makes sense. I assume everybody kind of follows this. This is just like your basic call frame operation here. Classes and structs can be boiled down to a collection of primitive types, although some classes do have V tables. Class methods are just another a function uh, that happens to take a pointer to a class object as the first parameter. In other words, you write like this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm excited. Since every compiled programming language uses the same concepts to compile, why can't they just interact? Before we go any further, I'd like to give you an example of what I want to, want to achieve. Include Rust module header, header or I, let's see, or ideal C++ 20 world import Rust module. We all know that uh, C++ 20 is going to be 20, 20, uh, 2032's favorite feature. Uh, all right. Pragma once, hit it. Void foo, Rust module, hit that. Okay. We want to be able to compile those files and get an executable that prints hello from Rust to standard out. Now, now let's look at why this won't just work out of the box. Okay. Name, name mangling, data layout, and standard libraries. All right. The most obvious reason that compiled programming languages just can't interact with each other is the most obvious one, syntax. C++ compilers don't understand Rust, and Rust compilers don't understand C++. Thus, neither language can tell what function or classes the other is making available. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This makes – we're all on the same page here. Uh, now you might be saying, but if I use C++ uh, header file to export functions and classes to other CPP files, certainly I could make a header file that tells C++ where, uh, that there is, oh my goodness, my camera! Ah! Why does today suck? Why is today just sucking? I hate, I hate my 
my life. Okay, uh, I don't know what happened today. Today is just come out cursed. Today is a day of cursed. Okay, internet keeps failing. Um, camera ain't working. New camera's on the way. It said it'd be here Wednesday, but now the one that said it'd be here Wednesday says it's arriving Thursday. I don't know what's happening. All I know is this isn't okay. All right, let's keep on going. Now you might be saying, but if I use C++ header to export functions and classes to other CPP files, certainly I'd be able to make a, C a header file that tells C++ where the Rust function foo uh, out there. Uh, if you did say, or at least I think that, congratulations, you are on the right track, but there are some less obvious things we need to talk about. Okay, okay. First, major blocker to interoperability is name mangling. You can you can certainly make a .h file with the forward declaration of void foo, but the C++ compiler will then look for a symbol called Z3 foo v, while Rust compiler mangled foo function into Z, ZN10 Rust module 3 foo 17 HD F3 DC. Jeez, I wonder what's happened there. Compiling the C++ code starts out okay, but, the, but once the linking stage is reached, the linker will not be able to find underscore z3 foo v since it doesn't exist r.i.p this makes me sad it just does where's the cam the cam died my life died everything about this is just scuffed okay just just deal with it obviously we need to change how the name mangling behaves on one side or the other we'll come back to this thought in a moment the second major blocker is data layout Put simply, different compilers may treat the same struct declaration differently by putting its fields at different locations in memory. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, C plus or C does like tight packing of structs. So if you have a 32-bit int, a 32-bit int, and an 8-bit int, it will be stored at like 32. You know, it will be stored at 0, 0 plus 32, and then uh, 1, right? If you have a 64-bit, right? If you're 64-bit lines. Whereas Rust will put a 64-bit uh, in place of everything. So if you have a 32-bit integer, the first one's at 1, the next one's at 2, the next one's at 3. Even 8 bits are sitting there. That's like the general thing. I know that... I know there's no guarantee on these things, but that's generally what happens. Uh, order's not guaranteed either. That can't make sense. I, I don't believe that order's not guaranteed. Because you can do... Um, I guess in Rust, maybe order's not guaranteed, but in C it is, because you can do a C... You can do a C... Comp uh, a C data layout in Rust, so it must be deterministic, right? Order is not guaranteed, huh? Crazy. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know this area. Okay, I, I I can buy, I can buy it. All right, the third and final blocker I want to look at here is standard libraries. If you have a C plus plus function that returns a standard string, Rust won't be able to understand that. Of course not. Instead, you just need to implement some sort of converter that will convert C plus plus strings to Rust strings. Similarly, a Rust vec object won't be usable from C plus plus unless you convert. Uh, it to something C++ understands. Let's investigate how we can fix the first problem, name mangling. Extern C and why it sucks. Okay, okay, I like this. The easy way to use Extern C feature that nearly every programming language has is this right here. Paragma once, this thing, Extern C foo void. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Rust module, no mangle, boom, boom. Pub Extern C foo function, let's go. Okay, this still works and it's beautiful. It's Beautiful enough. This actually will compile and run, assuming uh, you link all the proper standard libraries. So why does extern C suck? Well, by using extern C, you give up features like function overloads, class methods, templates. Okay, it's po okay. I mean, okay. It's possible to create wrappers around extern C functions to crudely emulate these features, but I don't want complex wrappers that provide crude emulations. I want wrappers that directly plumb those features and are human readable. Furthermore, I don't want to have to change existing source code, which means that ugly no mangle pub extern C must go. All right, I love the motivation. I'm loving the motivation here. Enter D. Enter the D, people. We got them. We got them so good. D is a programming language that has been around since 2001, and nobody cares. Although it's not source compatible with C++, it is similar to C++. I personally like D for its intuitive syntax and great features, but for gluing Rust and C++ together, D stands out for two reasons. Classic D standing out. Extern, C++, and Paragma Mangle Foo. With Extern, C++, you can tell D to use C++ name mangling for any symbol. Therefore, following code will compile. Okay. Okay. Void. Bar. Okay, nice, nice. You just, like, declare that this function exists. You call it, and it does it, and then this one just puts it in. Is that what I'm seeing? Right? This one... 
This one, foo is defined in, in this file, foo.cpp, and bar is defined in this file. And so foo is called, which refers to bar, right? Am I, am I seeing that correctly? The D, I mean, the D is strong. Yeah, if bar is forward declared, and then foo is also forward declared right here. Okay, 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 okay. I never thought D would have a usefulness, but let's go. However, it gets better. We can use mangle foo to manually override name mangling to anything we want. Therefore, the following code compiles. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> huh? Oh no. That means you have to have something that compiles in between, right? You have to you have to create D bindings. You have to compile your C to D. This looks cursed. Dude, it's cursed. Wrong turn, bro. No, this is the right turn. This is the right turn. Rust foo. Hello from Rust, unsafe bar, call that bar, extern, link name bar D function function bar. Let's go. With paragma mangle foo, we can not only tell D how Rust mangled its function, but also create a function that Rust can see. You might be wondering why we had to tell Rust to override mangling of bar. It's because Rust apparently won't apply any name mangling to bar for the sole reason that it is an extern block. Okay, fair. That is fair. In my testing, not even marking it as extern Rust made any difference. Go figure. All right. You also might be wondering why we can't use Rust name mangling overrides instead of uh, Ds. Well, Rust only lets you override mangling on function forward declarations marked as extern, so you can't make a function defined in Rust masquerade as a C++ function. Okay? So now we use D to glue our basic example together. Look at this thing go. Look at this thing go. Look at it go. Include Rust module, or an ideal world, this. Function main. Okay, this is in Rust. All right, Rust module. Yes, it's right here. Glutey. Glutey, no GC. This is the Rust function. Mangle this. Oh my goodness. Void foo from Rust. Extern C. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is this? This has to be generated, right? These Glutey files have to be generated. This is wild. This is wild if this works. This is wild. In this example, main calls foo from C. Dude, imagine the tool chain. Can we just take a second? And I just want you to imagine the tool chain of compiling C, Rust, and D. You got three, like, what kind of, what, what the C makes going on around here? No, I will not ima imagine. Try it out. Dude, trying it out is going to take me hours to probably get it correctly set up. In this example, when main calls foo from C++, is actually doing a D function that then, uh, that can call the Rust function. It's a little ugly, but it's possible, uh, but it's possibly the best solution available that leaves both C++ and Rust code in pristine condition. Automating the glue. Let's go. Nobody wants to have to write massive D file. <laughs> No, one. Ain't, ain't nobody want that massive D file. Truer statements have never been said in my entire lifetime, okay? <laughs> Truer statements have never been said. In fact, nobody even wants to write C++ header files by hand. <laughs> We're so back. Uh, for that reason, I created a proof of concept tool called Polyglot that can scan C++ code and generate wrappers for use from Rust and D. My eventual goal is to also wrap the other languages, but as this is a personal project, I'm not developing Polyglot very quickly, and it certainly is nowhere near the point of being ready for production use in serious projects. That being said, it's really amazing to compile and run the examples and know that you are looking at multiple languages working together. This is cool. This is this is pretty dang cool. Like in general, it is super cool to see these things run together so smoothly. I mean, Zig Zig offers something really similar with C, right? Like you can actually just take C projects and just just call. And like you can just import an entire library and things just compile, it just works. In fact, I've heard some people say that it's easier to build a lot of the C programs by simply importing it into Zig and then compiling it via Zig. I'm just saying. I heard that it's it's just it's just easier. This sounds like a micro front front end. Zig's defer is goaded. Yeah, apply cold water uh, to burn areas. I know. Next up, I originally planned to write this on a let's see on this topic in one blog post, but there's a lot of interesting things to cover, so I'll stop here for now. The next installment of this series will take a look at how we can overcome two major road blockers. Okay of interoperability. This is super cool. Great job on mixing C++ and Rust and just using the D and and recognizing that nobody wants to write the massive D. Glue code. Like nobody. Nobody. In fact, I'm pretty sure everything you've written right here, all of this is exactly how 
React hides the DOM from everybody. This is pretty much this is pretty much virtual DOM, as far as I can tell. It's the same thing. Same thing. Virtual DOM using D glue code. Same thing. Same difference. Okay? You wouldn't understand. React mentioned. HTMX go. Let's go. This was great. This was great. This is honestly one of the best articles I've read I've read in a while because it is just it I love seeing people that write projects that are just nuts. It is just simply nuts, right? Would I I mean, is this really a great idea? In my head, no, it's not a good idea. But is it awesome? Yes, it is awesome. D's nuts? Yeah, exactly. D also has a compiler, so it can run uh use C libraries. Okay. I like this though. I like it. C++ Rust using D. My man just made the crud, uh, just made a crud app. <laughs> he, he, dude, he just, made, he made a crud app. You got to put a little lowercase on that U. It's just straight up a crud app. Uh, imagine programming in 50 uh, years, totally new stuff that we do nowadays. I know, it's wild. The D crust. I know, it's, it's literally D crust. It's some D crust. Oh, hey, the name is the primogen.